right, yo, this is gonna be three of the most awesome hard rock and metal riffs you have ever played in your life. This is gonna be the Rage Against Machine, which you just saw, Killing in a Name of. Little old uh, Steve Harris in there with uh, Iron Maiden, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, one of the greatest songs of all time. Steve Harris, fantastic on the bass. And also we have some uh, Megadeth in there with Peace Cells. You heard right in the beginning. So you are gonna learn all these. You're gonna learn them quick. It's gonna be super fun. And you are gonna have a lot of fun playing these as well. Anyway, I am Finbar of Finbar Bass. Okay, so what are those bass videos all about down when you click on the YouTube text box right there? Well, bass playing is, is kind of a time of discovery. You know, it's like an adventure. You're learning new stuff all the time. You're increasing your chops. You're getting better, right? So we need to practice bass. And when we're practicing, you know, and learning all these different techniques, like through these videos, why not make it fun, right? I mean, that's great. If you can actually get better on the bass, you know, and learn all these different songs or techniques or whatever, and, you know, and have fun doing it instead of just doing it through, you know, repetitious, you know, study, um, then that's, that's a fantastic thing. And that's fun. You're doing it through something that you love. You're doing it through music. And, and that makes it just so much easier to do and so much better. So don't forget, click on the uh, clicker box right down there in the YouTube text box. Um, I think it's really going to help you out. All right, so Peace Cells from Megadeth. This is a really awesome riff. You know, you've probably heard it a million times before, but now you're going to play it. So what you're doing here is you're on the seventh fret of the A string, and then go seven, five, seven. Right? Just like that. And then you're going to hit the um, fifth fret of the D string. hit the opening now on the on the um studio version he's playing this with a um, pick i'm doing it but with my fingers just because i think it's, it's fun to play with your fingers but you can play with a pick if you have a pick that'd be more authentic i suppose so anyway uh seven five seven on the a you're gonna hit the fifth fret of the d string and then you're gonna hit the open e and i like to that open E, I like to mute out all the other strings so they're not all buzzing around. You don't want that sound. So my fingers are muting out all the, the, the um, A, D, and the G string. And then you're going to hit the 7th fret and then the 5th fret. So if I do that all together slow. part here is you're hitting the uh, seventh and an eighth fret of the D. This is a D string right here. This is a seventh fret, so you're going seventh and eighth. Right? And it's pretty fast right there. A lot of people um, play that just with a hammer on like that or a slide. Um, when I listen to the studio version, it, it really sounds to me like he's, he's actually picking each note. So that's how I play it. Just like that. And then next, same thing we just did, right? So you got go down to that seventh fret of the A string, and then you got, and that's going to get you back into the beginning of the progression. So that's, you're on the fifth fret of the E, and then sixth fret of the E. So if I did that all together slow, both parts, just so you can kind of follow along there. Just like that and if that actually seems like your fingers are getting all fumbled up and it's a little bit too too fast just keep practicing it and practice it actually at a, at a slow speed practice it at the speed at which it's the fastest that you can still uh, do it cleanly and then gradually increase the speed and what's great is if you, can, if you have a metronome or something like that to work with gradually increase the speed of the metronome until you get it actually up to speed but don't, you know, don't be discouraged if it's, you know, getting back into it after this part here, or it's, you know, skipping the string and hitting the E 
an open E from the D string. If it all seems weird, that's fine. Just keep practicing it slow and you'll build it better and better and better. If it's very, if it's frustrating you and you're not getting it, completely step away for a while and then come back and you'll be way better at it. Try again. <laughs> So I wanted to show you both my uh, hands, my left hand and my right hand, or fretting hand and picking hand, right here. When he does it, it seems like ultra fast and it seems really difficult. But it's really not that hard once you uh, practice it a little bit. Really what you're doing is you're hitting this 11th fret, 12th fret, and the uh, 14th fret of the, uh, of the G string. Either like that, which is a little bit later, or just like that, but then you're just hitting the open drone note, or the uh, D uh, string open, after each hit on the G string. Just like that. So all you have to do is, you, just to practice this, just put your finger on, just to practice this, you could just put your 11th, your finger on the 11th fret of the uh, G string and just do this business here. And I mute out the E and the A string with my thumb. I got the floating thumb technique. That's how I play it. So, this stuff. And what I'm doing is, um, I'm hitting it the, the G string with my middle finger. And then I'm hitting the D string with my um, pointer and then middle finger. Just like that. So you can practice this just doing simply that. You got middle finger on the G, right? And then pointer, middle finger on the D. You can even just go that, you can even just go that slow at first. like that. And what helps out a little bit is if you kind of exaggerate that middle finger hit on the uh, on the G string, it kind of um, keeps you in time. Just like that. One, two. So you're hitting the, the D string, the drone note, actually twice, twice, and then once. Just like that. And then you're going to go to the 12th fret. Same thing. So you got, if I do it slow. So when you go to the 14th fret, you're going to do this four times. And then just hit the G, the D, and then the G once. So you got. Right? One, two, three, four. Just like that. So if I did the whole thing slow. Just like that. And again, start off slow so you can even just figure out, you know, what your fingers feel like when it's doing, when you're doing that. And then um, increase the speed, increase the metronome until you could play it a lot faster and smoother. All right, so for this one, the Rage Against the Machine Killing in the Name of, you're going to have to detune your top string down to a D. So normally it's an E. Right? Normally it would match this, this note here, the 7th fret of the A string, but now it's matching the 5th fret, because that's a D note right there. D string, D note, and that's a D right now. So like, I'll just... So this is an E. This is standard tuning, E, A, D, G, right? This note right here is a D. So if I hit that, and then detune here, my detune my E string. So those notes 
match, that's going to be your, your low D. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit that sweet low D, right, which is now just this open string. Then you're going to do a hammer-on between the third fret and the fifth fret. So just hit the third fret once and come down percussively to the fifth fret with that finger. Or you can use your, your uh, pinky. Then you're going to hammer on between the third and the fourth fret of the D string. And then hit that fifth fret of the A string. So, so far. Then you're going to hit that open D again. And wait for the airplane to go over. Then you're going to do a hammer on between the second fret. This is the second fret right here and the third fret. And then hit that second fret. Is all on the E string. Of course, you can pick each note if you want. You can do just a hammer on and pull off. So if I play that all slow, I jazz it up a little bit with some ghost notes just to keep it funky. See that? I go open, hammer on, ghost note, little chuck. If you want to um, slap and pop it, same thing. I would just suggest that when you're when you, after you hit the E string or the D string as it is now, and you go to this this hammer on here, you kind of mute that E string so it doesn't ring out. You get kind of sloppy. You don't have to now because remember this what you're hammering onto is a D, and that open string. powerful and deep like that, you can leave it. But it just depends on, you know, the situation you're playing in in the band, what, they're else, what else they're doing. So if you want, if you don't want that ringing out, you can uh, mute it with your forearm while you're playing, you're playing the rest of the stuff. See right there, when I'm, when I'm, uh, when I'm doing that hammer on, now my, my forearm is actually down and muting the E string right there. So you don't hear it ringing out over everything else, if you don't want to. All right, three awesome riffs from three fantastic bands. Yo, you got it. Don't forget to click on the YouTube text box right down there if you want to get those lessons that you haven't gotten yet. So definitely click on that. Um, other than that, you could always subscribe to my channel, Finbar Bass, for tons more... Um, riffs and songs and all kinds of stuff on there tons and tons and tons of videos and if you subscribe you'll know when everything's coming out as soon as it does so thanks for watching and have fun with those yo